Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today I am sharing three recipes that all utilize the Instant Pot, but don't worry if you don't have one, you can also make these um, with either a crock pot or on your stove. The first recipe that I'm sharing today is for beef tips with gravy. And when I first got my Instant Pot, which I actually got on Black Friday, it was half off at Bed Bath & Beyond. I knew that this had to be the first dish that I made. I saw it um, shared over by Mandy uh, from Mandy in the Making, so I will link her channel in the description box below along with the recipe. Uh, but when she made it, it just looked so good and so I knew that I had to make it. But to start out with, I just took one pound of sirloin steak and I cut it into cubes and then I did season it with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Now the original recipe calls for garlic salt, which I don't have, so I just ended up adjusting the salt and pepper later on, which I would do anyways at the end of a dish. Uh, but once you've combined those, you're just going to turn your Instant Pot onto the saute function and once it comes up to a high heat, you're going to add in a little bit of oil and then you're going to brown the beef on all sides and this goes really quickly now again if you don't have an instant pot this is something that you could cook on the stove it's just going to take longer and need to simmer for longer on the stove um, than it would take in the instant pot now I was really intimidated using the Instant Pot for the first time, so let me know in the comments below if you have one. Do you like using it? Are you intimidated to use it? Um, all three of these recipes could not be any simpler to make and I was so impressed with how quickly they came together. Um, and I do apologize, I know that in a lot of this footage there's a lot of steam coming off of the Instant Pot. Um, so please bear with me there while I get used to filming with it. But once the meat browned, I just took a little bit of the beef broth and deglazed the bottom of the pan. And then you're going to add in some sliced onions and some sliced portobello mushrooms. And I use the baby portobello mushrooms. And then you're going to sprinkle in some Worcestershire sauce. And then this is going to pressure cook for 15 minutes on high pressure. And then while that's cooking, you're just going to combine some beef broth with a brown gravy packet, and that's going to go in after your meat is done cooking. Um, so once it cooks for the 15 minutes, you're gonna let it naturally release the steam for five minutes. And all that means is that you're not going to touch it for five minutes. Um, once that five minutes is up, then you're gonna go ahead and vent your Instant Pot. So here you're going to see me take that lid off and you're absolutely going to get steamed out here for a second. Um, but that will clear up here in a minute. I could not believe how quickly this cooked. Um, but so once it was finished uh, releasing and I opened the lid, you're gonna pour in the beef broth and gravy mixture and turn it back over to the saute function and just let it cook for a couple of minutes until it thickens up to like the desired consistency that you're looking for. I could not believe how tender this meat was. I am so picky when it comes to texture of beef. Um, to be honest, like the only steak that I like is filet because I don't like um, any like chewy, hard texture with meat. Uh, but it was so tender and I cannot wait to make this again. It absolutely is a must have recipe. So we just went ahead and served this over some mashed potatoes and I'm gonna be honest, I just got the Bob Evans mashed potatoes from Walmart because we love them and they're super quick and simple to just heat up in the microwave. But look how good this looks. I'm telling you, you have to try this recipe. The second recipe is for a chicken parmesan sandwich. So for this recipe, you're going to start off the same way by setting your Instant Pot to the saute function and let that heat up to high. And then you're going to add in some oil and then about a pound of chicken breast that you've cut into cubes. And then you're just going to let this um, cook. So my chicken didn't end up browning very well because I probably should have done this in batches. It kind of steamed a little bit more so than I wanted it to. Uh, but the flavor was still amazing, but it just didn't get that like golden brown crust on the outside. So if you're looking for that, then I would recommend doing this in two batches. But you're just going to let it saute until all of the sides are cooked, and then we're going to add in our other ingredients. So once it's almost cooked, I start adding in the spices, which are just going to be some garlic powder, Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper. And then to that, you're going to add in 16 ounces of marinara, so whatever your favorite marinara is. And then you're gonna set your Instant Pot to pressure on high, and it's only going to cook um, for four minutes. 
and then you're gonna let it release um, naturally for 10 minutes and then you'll hit your valve to turn it off and you will be ready to assemble your sandwiches. And if you didn't want to have this as a sandwich, I think this meat would be really good with pasta or over rice, so you definitely can customize it. But for the sandwiches, I just used some naan bread, and then to that I'm going to add in some of the chicken mixture and then some shredded mozzarella cheese. And then I'm just going to wrap it up in foil and place it in the oven at about 350 degrees for 10 minutes until the cheese melted. Um, so this bread was definitely a little bit too long for a sandwich So you are going to see that eventually I do kind of cut the little top part off of it um, Just to make it a lot easier to eat um, But you can use whatever kind of bread that you like or bun like that you have on hand anything would work here um, But if you do use naan bread naan does have a lot of um, like butter in it on its own So once it came out of the oven I did choose to put it in a pan on the stove just to crisp up the outside of it And I didn't put any butter or anything in the pan just dry into it and it got nice and toasty um, And crisp on the outside, which is how we like it here in my house Again, if you don't have an instant pot, this would be very easy to make in your crock pot, um, the chicken, and then assemble your sandwiches when you're ready to eat. Uh, but here you can see it sliced in half. It was so delicious. I highly recommend this recipe. The last recipe is going to be for a Parmesan risotto. To say that I was skeptical about making a risotto in the instant pot would be the biggest understatement. Um, if you've ever made risotto before or had it or know anything about it, it's a labor of love. It is something that is very time consuming over the stove, but well worth it. And so I had to try this recipe out because I thought there is no way um, that this is going to cook properly, but I could not have been more wrong. It was amazing and took a fraction of the time. So just like the other two recipes, you're starting out with your Instant Pot on the saute function and you're just going to melt in a couple tablespoons of butter and then add in an onion that has been diced. You're just going to let this cook down until the onion softens. And then once it's softened, we're going to add in some garlic and some thyme and you're just going to let that cook until it becomes a little bit fragrant. And then we're going to add our Arborio rice in. Um, so if you're not familiar with risotto, you do have to use arborio rice. Uh, the way that the starch releases from the rice is what gives risotto its creamy texture. So it is something that you do have to have. Um, so when we add that in, we're just going to let that brown in the bottom of the Instant Pot. And then we will deglaze our pan. Now the recipe calls for wine to deglaze the pan, but I just went ahead and used some broth. And actually for this recipe, I used um, a mixture of chicken broth and beef broth because that's what I had on hand and the flavor turned out amazing. So you can use anything that you'd like. If you're vegetarian and you wanna use a vegetable broth, you can absolutely do that. Um, but you do wanna make sure that you deglaze the pan and scrape along the bottom so that way you don't get that burn notice function with your Instant Pot uh, before you add the rest of your liquid and cover it with the lid. As always, I will have the recipes linked in the description box below so you'll have all of the measurements for the ingredients if you're recreating these recipes at home. For this recipe, you're just going to put your lid on and then it's going to pressure cook at high for five minutes. And then once it's done, you're going to let it quick release and then take the lid off. And then you're going to add in some salt and pepper to taste and then some Parmesan cheese. I did buy like a wedge of Parmesan cheese and grated it. Um, well, to be honest, I had my husband grate it. <laughs> um, but for dishes like this where there's only a few ingredients, if I can make it work in my budget, I do like to try to get um, good quality Parmesan for something like this. But you absolutely can use um, the shredded kind that you can get like in the um, shaky bottle too, if that's what you have on hand. But you're just gonna stir that to combine and then you are all set. Again, I cannot recommend this dish enough and I cannot wait to hear what you think if you give it a try. I really hope that you enjoy these three dishes today. If you haven't done so already, please make sure that you subscribe before you go. And let me know in the comments down below what dishes you're looking for this time of year.